Okay, we'll get going. Uh, try and make this take as little time as possible, but this is the critical meeting. I know what you're used to looking at when you walk into that stadium. So I'll tell you what I see. I see a blank canvas. I see our canvas. I see an opportunity to not worry about what's been done in the past and focus on what we're doing in the present. Fall camp is uh, hard work. Fall camp is a grind. Hell, a little bit. Can I cuss? <laughs> a <laughs> Fall camp is a lot of things, but with a young team, most importantly, it becomes a chance to prove yourself. You know, who played last year, who, who was involved last year, and, and you saw how small that number was. We were going to have to build everything from the ground up. There was a little bit of pressure. We didn't want to be that team that, you know, breaks the playoff streak, has a bad, bad season in the regular season. And with it being a young team, I knew we just needed, we needed reps, we needed experience. Knowing that it was just going to be a couple of us that we we're relying on for leadership and experience, we took that personally and I thought the guys stepped up and did a good job. There's only one way to cool off after a hot start to fall camp. And it's even sweeter when you're with your brothers. Good evening and welcome to Bearcat Stadium as the 2022 season about to get underway. It's Northwest Missouri State and Fort Hay State. There's something about that that early season, first Thursday night. You know, Bearcat Stadium was super excited to have Bearcat football back. After fall camp, we were just hungry, ready to get after it. That is one thing we did know is we had guys that were going to give it all they had. There's still a lot of competition for spots, too, because like there were a lot of young guys on the team, a lot of transfers, a lot of guys who had yet to prove themselves. And this game was an opportunity to do it and solidify themselves on the field and on the roster. What I want to talk to you about, just for a couple of minutes here, is let's, let's forget about that pressure, okay? Uh, because this is a big game, but forget about that. What I'd like you to do is approach this first game from here on out in your mind, approach it like you're going to, uh, going to an amusement park, okay? What's the objective of going to an amusement park? Have fun. Have fun, you bet. That's what you need to do tonight. We are about ready for a kickoff and in this first quarter the Bearcats going from our right to our left. Here comes the kick. Northwest on the board for six to nothing with the first TD of the season. A big hit that time by Charles Gaddy. Right, looks to throw, pass has got touchdown, boy, out of the backfield. He'll be thrown to the ground. Three sacks, opening night. As the Bearcats will go to 1-0 on the season with a 33-19 win. The Cats are 1-0, and the momentum is on their side as they invade Jeff City. Welcome back to Dwight T. Reed Stadium in Jefferson City, Northwest Missouri State, and Lincoln University, just a few minutes away from kickoff. Bearcat Nation, let's go! Two weeks in, we'll see how this team improves and comes back around for week three with Central Missouri coming to town next week. Tucker Peavy just won his 100th game. Let's go, baby!
You know, family day for me will always resonate with Scott. You know, he was such a big part of my life and the early part of my career here, he was a big reason why, you know, I was brought back to campus uh, as a full-time coach uh, after being away for a while. It, it's just a very, very special time and it was exciting as a coach to see them go out and play with that passion that Scott always brought. You know, I was fortunate enough to be able to witness him coach when I was a young kid, and I knew he was always about having a punishing defense that will never allow you to get anything. It's family weekend on the Northwest campus. Should be a good crowd for this matchup between Northwest Missouri State and Central Missouri. The Bearcats undefeated coming into this. No matter when we kick it off, start fast. Think faster, all right? Set them down their mind early, all right? Fast and physical all day. Let's have some fun. It's one. Northwest will see their record improve to 3-0, while Central Missouri falls to 0-3. Ultimately, the Bearcats came out. They ran the ball really well today. The defense was stellar, and you know what? You'll take a game like that any day. And that'll be it. Central Oklahoma doesn't have to snap it as Central Oklahoma leads from the start to the finish of this one. 23 to 14 as Central Oklahoma defeats Northwest Missouri State this afternoon. And it just showed the way we played, the way we came out flat, and the way they played that they wanted it more. You know, it wasn't a lack of preparation. Um, our coaches put us in a position to win that game. It just brought about a lot of details that a young football team had to learn. That definitely propelled us forward to understand that, you know, we're gonna have to work every single week to get better. It's back to the drawing board. A work week for the Cats as they prep for a rebound win over the Griffins. Sunny sky, 72 degrees in Maryville. It'll be a great day for football. Northwest and Missouri Western. Trust your training and go play with deadly precision for 60 minutes. Everybody got one. Northwest, despite being banged up, despite having, you know, your starting quarterback out, some offensive linemen beat up, your starting running back out, uh, they still found a way to get through and get it done. And welcome to Carney Smith Stadium, Brandenburg Field on the Pittsburgh State campus in Pittsburgh, Kansas. It's Northwest Missouri State and Pittsburgh State, a matchup of two teams ranked in the top ten in the nation. You know, it's not very many times uh, lately that Northwest is going to come into a game that's the underdog. And Pitt State, you know, after losing to Northwest five out of the last six years, they, they want Northwest pretty bad. Pittsburgh State 21 and Northwest Missouri State 3 as we go to halftime. You better have a next man up mentality because we had at that point gotten a rash of injuries and took more in the game. You know, you talk to young kids about always being ready. Yeah, your time can be, you know, in any moment. down Northwest as he got over the goal line for the score. And that was a tough uh, hit. Yeah, he, he's, he's got to go out. I can see coming into the game. Northwest trying to tie this one up with 12 seconds left in the game. Ponce out of the shotgun, takes the snap, rolls to the right side, continues to roll, looking for someone to pass through the back of the end zone, leaping up pass is cut by Hembro. Do they count it? No. Uh, say he's out of bounds uh, at the back of the end zone. 
it's hard to tell from our angle whether he held on or not. Yeah. It looked like he might have been inbounds with it, so he might have bobbled it in the back, but it was right. close. It takes a lot on the road to come back from a deficit like we had. The week four loss was, you know, we can be beat. And then week six is now like, we can compete. I think it was just something that really brought the whole team together. We have to be great now. There's no breathing room to say, oh, my bad or I messed up. We have to be great from here on out. Put your big boy pants on and you know, it's time to go. With their backs against the wall, the cats have no choice but to turn around and fight. I'm not interested in who we're not. I'm interested in who we are. You fly around for 60 minutes, not afraid to fail. Not afraid to fail. You got to play to win. I'm going to run this town. Here comes pressure in the backfield. It'll be wrapped up in a sack. Back from the play. Sam Phillips there again. Back to pass. Lots. He looks on the right side. Pass is caught by Sturdy. Sturdy at the five-yard line. Spins, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Northwest. So far, the Bearcat defense just dominating this Ichabod offense. Play action, Hotsey back to pass. Sets, looks, throws down the middle. Field going for Griffin again. He hustled into the 20-yard line between the hashes. He stumbles toward the goal line, dives toward the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Northwest. So the Ichabods take the lead for the first time this afternoon. This was 7-15 left in the game. Northwest needs a score. They are down 24-23 with 2.02 left. Play action, rolling left. Hauntsey sets half time. Looks, throws back on the right side of the end zone. What a ball from Mike Hauntsey rolling to his left. 31 seconds left. It comes down to this play. Fourth and goal from the 10-yard line for the Ichabods. He's to the five for the goal line. Dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Ichabods. We'll see what the Bearcats can pull out. You know, because we all realize that if we lose this game, our shots at the playoffs are out the window. So we really had nothing to lose at that point. 18 seconds left. Griffin will go wide to the right side. Moya also to the right side. Back to pass is Hauntsey. Light rush, looks, throws across the middle. Pass is caught between the hatches. Moya with the reception. He's upended at the 43-yard line in Ichabod territory. Now with 12 seconds left. Steps up, looks, throws. Pass is caught. Griffin between the hashes to the 25, down to the 20-yard line with six seconds left. Hauntsey will hold. Will Berenzen will snap it. Kick is on the way. And it is good! Maryville's a special town. Uh, to the people in this community, uh, Northwest and the community are synonymous. They, they go hand in hand. Like I said, being from so far away from home and hearing all how you know, someone else came is, is special. It's, um, I feel like that's what makes it Northwest. It's homecoming weekend in Maryville and Northwest Missouri State's football team getting ready to take on Northeastern State. I think that's kind of where everybody kind of puts you on watches, like how good can you play in that homecoming game because that's when everybody's there to watch. With the option stuff, uh, practice is always pretty intense anyway. But, you know, everybody knew. You know, it was, it was going to be an intense week, and it's going to be about the details particularly. It just felt like, okay, here's the next test, and this one's on the road. That test, however, isn't an easy one. The Cats are squaring off against two-time MIAA Offensive Player of the Year T.J. Davis and the high-powered Lopers. The last time we were in Kearney was 2019. The Lopers did come away with an upset that day, 24-17. to They're hoping to repeat history and find themselves back into the playoffs for the second year in a row. So both of these teams are playing like their lives depend on it. Somebody's going home today. Okay? What I really want to see today, what I really want to see is is have we taken that next step what are we willing to surrender for one another we're way past big speech time words don't mean anything 
I want to see what you do with your actions today. You got to fight with everything you've got for 60 minutes. Here we go. Together on three. One, two, three. Together! Jay Harris, who gets the carry up the middle, he goes, lowers his shoulders, he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Northwest. Sense as pressure comes in, he's hit and he's brought down. Ball is loose on the turf, it is picked up off the right side. Zach Howard and I believe Walker Graves getting back there for that sack. That results in a quick one play drive for Northwest Missouri State and the Bearcats back in front. This crowded Murray is stunned. And makes it a 23 to 14 Nebraska Kearney lead over Northwest. If Northwest wants to keep their long playoff streak alive, they need to have their best quarter of the entire season right here. And an offensive line did a great job opening up that hole. Off left side goes to Harris. Harris at the slide line to the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Northwest. Boy, massive hole that time. I think even you could have ran through that one, John. <laughs> but you wouldn't have had the acceleration of Moya. 5.41 left in the game. The Cats regain the lead, 27-24. Game may be on the line with 3.22 left. Option right. As Davis wants to throw toward the back of the end zone, and it is incomplete. The will of Moya to push that one forward, pick up the first down, down by 10, and they come out and outscore UNK 14 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Some big time plays defensively, and boy, these Bearcats running up and down the field on UNK. This kind of felt like a statement win this late in the season. While the young bucks are suiting up for Halloween, the senior class is suiting up for their last game in Bearcat Stadium. I knew it would be my last time running through the tunnel, and it was pretty uh, just like emotional to me in that aspect. When you do it for four and a half years, it's like, I don't know, you kind of get in that routine, and I love going out there on the field, but uh, I think I'll miss it most next year. I think that's when it'll really hit me. crowd is, is exhilarating and just to know that you have that entire stadium behind your back uh, it's an incredible feeling. Last one piece Liz, let's get it! Some spirits are lifted, others are locked in on the battle ahead. That's why every playoff is just one game. It ain't a best out of three, it ain't a best out of five. You get the most important thing is that one game and that one play that you're on right then and there. Because whether you win or lose, you never get that play back. All right, there is no more my bads. And like Coach just said, there is nothing scheduled for Sunday, Monday, or next week of. You got one game, you got 60 minutes, you got one play at a time to get that back. Good? Let's get a break, get out of here. Northwest Missouri State and Emporia State. Both teams coming in with identical eight and two records. These teams have played such similar seasons and their seasons all come down to today. Let's fly around today. Don't let it be the last, all right? Yes, Don't let it be the last, all right? Do your job and talk to each other all day. Here we go, ride or die on three, one, two, three. Ride it all starts with the one o'clock kickoff and 60 minutes of football from here at Wolf Stadium. Slam is tipped off in the air and is intercepted for Northwest as it is picked off by Shane Fredrickson. Harris in the backfield out the pistol formation. Gets the carry. Nice hole off the middle. Breaks the time. Plays to the 15. Angles to the 10. Outside to the 5-yard line. Turn the goal line. In the end zone. Touchdown, Northwest. And back to pass. Gleason flushed out of the pocket. A flight falls. Looks to throw back across his body. And it's intercepted after a tip pass as Dumas comes up with the interception. Mitch Goff with a solid block up front to help open up that hole. Ewan Mills as well. And again, carries a couple defenders with him all the way to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Northwest. 
Northwest right now lining up as if to go for it here. They end the option with the pitch to the right side as to Brady looks down the field. Pass is cut. The senior linebacker corralled that with just one hand. Now on the run, looks to throw toward the end zone. Pass cut. Touchdown, Northwest. Oh, coming up for the catch with Ryan Dewhurst, the tight end. And he will be brought down for a rare sack as Kobe Claiborne comes in to make the tackle. It is Brayden Wright with the carry toward the goal line. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Northwest. A lot on the line for the final two minutes and ten seconds of this game as these two teams fighting for a playoff berth in the Division II playoffs. As pressure comes in, rolls left side as he scrambles between the hashes to the 20 to the 15. The Hornets driving down the field. The season comes down to one play. Grayson takes the shotgun snap, back to pass, rolls on the right side, on the run, looks to throw toward the end zone, ball is tipped, and it is intercepted! Smith sky high to bring that one in, a clutch interception for Northwest, and that might have just sealed the deal on this win. You guys came out here and found a way to win a football game against a good football team on the road. You finish this thing 9-2 and two with your backs against the wall since Pittsburgh State. I'm proud of you. You found a way. Now we'll go to a selection show tomorrow and find out what happens. But regardless of that, I want to address a comment you made last night. You did leave a legacy. No matter what happens from this moment forward, you did. For the few seniors that we had losing 17 guys a year ago and having to take this ragtag bunch of guys that had no game experience, you did leave a legacy, son. And you'd be proud of that senior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With the regular season coming to a close, the future of the 2022 Bearcats is unknown. Could this be the end of the streak? or will they forge ahead into the playoffs for year 18? It was a reality setting in of like, this might be it for us, but we were hungry for more. If they got us in, we were gonna fight um, as long as they'd let us keep fighting. We don't wanna make you wait any longer than we have to. So we jump right back into the bracket in Super Region 3. You could definitely cut the air with a knife, that's for sure. I remember my roommates were like, are you guys going to get in? And what's going to happen? I'm like, I don't know. The first seed in this region, the Washita Baptist Tigers. Big overtime win in Arkadelphia Saturday over their cross-street rivals, Henderson State. They're going to host Northwest Missouri State. The Bearcats have won five in a row, getting a really nice 27-21 win over Emporia on Saturday. You know, you can make a three or four year run with a good group. But to be able to sustain success like that, when the bullseye's on your back each and every week is, is amazing. You know, this place has, a, has that winning culture and that family culture that, you know, it feels impossible to break. You know, coaches have done a great job of, of continuing that. And then along with the coaches, you know, it takes players to, to do so as well. And so I think they, they do a great job of buying into this family culture, this, you know, this winning culture, and I think that's just how it's, you know, stayed successful all these years. Good afternoon and welcome to Arkadelphia, Arkansas on the Washita Baptist campus. I'm John Coffey yeah. as Northwest Missouri State getting set to take on Washita Baptist in the first round of the NCAA Division II playoffs. Hey. West Missouri State, they move on to the second round of the NCAA Division II playoffs with a 47-17 win over Washington Baptist. You know, we talk all the time about family. We try and walk in and everything that we do, but I don't think there's anything more symbolic of family than Thanksgiving Day. It's always a fun time, you know, being around all the guys and uh, the coaches and their families. I think sometimes, you know, just the consistency of it around here kind of gets swept under the rug sometimes, but it's like, man, this is truly a special opportunity that not too many people in the nation ever get to experience, and people will do anything just to get the chance at. That's another opportunity. Everyone's gone. We're just here. You know, your bonds with your teammates are just growing more and more. 
Anytime you get on a flight, you know, for a football game, it's a big moment. You know, you feel like you, you made it. While the Cats enjoy the luxury of flying, there's no time to rest on their laurels as the number one team in the nation awaits. Welcome to Allendale, Michigan on the Grand Valley State University campus. It's Northwest Missouri State and Grand Valley State round two of the NCAA Division II playoffs. It's been awesome to be able to come up here and see this stadium for my first time, um, but also to see this rivalry uh, get renewed once again. And uh, the 18th straight season, the Bearcats have been in the playoffs 26th overall. That's the most in Division II. And then you look at Grand Valley State, they are tied for second in North Alabama, 21 uh, playoff appearances. So these are two teams that are used to playing this late in the season. That's why these high school student athletes go to Northwest Missouri State and they go to Grand Valley State because they want to be playing this time of year. They want to have a chance to go on and win a national championship and have a chance to go down as a legend of one of these two great programs. I'm a man on a huge play for Northwest, breaking through defensively. They played fantastic all day. Northwest down by two, seven to five. Good snap. They go after it, and it is blocked away. It picked up on the right side, and the Northwest will have the ball on the 49-yard line. I mean, just big play after big play. It's been a terrific Division II playoff football game. Northwest Missouri State with a one-point lead, 8-7, a 349 left in the game. Handoff goes to Reed on the left side, turns the corner to the five, races toward the play on the left side. He's in mid zone, touchdown, Randall. Northwest popped hard this afternoon, and uh, they will see their season come to a close, but what a battle with the number one ranked team in the nation in Grand Valley State. Man, Northwest put up a great fight and hung around with a great football team all day long, just didn't quite have enough plays. The never give up attitude. Um, to me, that's, that sits well with me. I'm not gonna let someone say, oh, yeah, you can't, you can't go do that. You can't come back and win. You can't do something like that. But countless times and time again, our team did that. I couldn't spit to you details in any of the games anymore. It's already just the guys. Like, I just miss being around people every day that are on the team. And I'll never forget just the relationships I've made, not only this year, but every year. A lot of guys got a taste of what football is like at Northwest Missouri State and in the MIAA, as well as in the national playoffs. And so it's there. There should feed a hunger into this off season and what we want to get accomplished. Everybody was disappointed in the outcome, but I think it illustrated just how close we are uh, to being able to make a significant run in the national playoffs. But uh, you know, the work's not done.